in California, United States, lived a survivor of Auschwitz. He lost here in Auschwitz-Birkenau his wife and his children. He survived by himself. He had some relatives in the United States. He went there after the war. He became a very great successful businessman in real estate. He was a builder. He built a new life. He married, remarried, children, very successful. But when you looked at him, you never found a smile on his face. His eyes were extinguished. No vitality, no life. Very sad and very slim, very thin. He looked like a sick man. In one moment of opening his heart, he asked him, Yankel, why are you like this? You are not healthy? He said, no, 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 I'm, physically I'm okay. But my daughter, Mirale, died in age of 12 in my arms of starvation. My wife here in California knows exactly what I used to eat, what I love to eat. She prepares for me the most delicious things. I come back home every day. I find the plate, the cutlery, everything is arranged, and she brings the best food. At the moment that I take a spoon or a fork close to my mouth, she appears in front of me. She, Mirale, a child of 12, very thin, only skin and bones. And she is offering her arm close to my mouth. Tate, ashtikale broit. Father, a piece of bread. Give me a piece of bread. At that moment, I push away the plate and the food. I cannot look at it. And it happens every day. The uncle is not among us anymore. He passed away. Because of him, I understood why our Torah, the sacred Torah, tells us twice. Zachor and Lotishkach. Why do you have to say the same thing twice? Zachor means remember. Lotishkach, don't forget. The answer may be, Zachor is an order. Do all the efforts to remember, like this march. Lotishkach is not an order like a prophecy. You will not forget. You will not be able to forget. Or neo-Nazis will remind you, or the memories will run after you. You can build families. You can be very successful in all fields. But something inside of your heart is dead. Lotishkach, I warn you, you will never forget. Yes, I know the question, even today we heard it here from you, Mr. Meisel. What will be when the last survivor, such as Young of California, will pass away. I am an optimist. We are a nation with a very phenomenal memory. Who lives today from the time of Exodus, Moses and Aaron, out from Egypt from slavery to freedom? No one. But 3,320 years, like a few days ago, all the Jewish people, all the globe, were sitting at the same table of the Seder Pesach and eating the same menu, 
that our ancient fathers ate in Egypt. Matzot. No bread. What a memory. And Maror and Haroset. There was a story with the Maccabees. Judah the Maccabee. Who doesn't know the story? With the oil. Instead of one day, eight days. When it comes the day, the Hebrew date of the 25th of uh, Kislev. All the Jews all over the world, from Helsinki to Melbourne, from Vladivostok to San Francisco, they lit a candle of Hanukkah. What a memory. Such a tragedy that you can see here the footsteps of it. We'll never be forgotten. Even when we will not be here anymore. Our children will be here and great, great, great children will be here. And they will tell the truth to the entire mankind. Look at your face. Look at the mirror. How did you behave 70 years ago? Or 700 years ago? Or 7,000 years ago? The future in my eyes is for sure a future of remembrance, not forgetting, because this is unforgettable. You cannot forget. I want only to say one word, to close my words, with an apply to brothers and sisters survivors. I'm here, as you have heard, from the very first march on the Yom HaShoah of 1988, Memchet. I'm not sure how many years in future the Lord Almighty will give me to be able to stand here in front of you, as I do 26 years already, to speak to you. I'm not sure. I pray to the Lord to give me the strength and the health and the ability to be here. But I see you, brothers, walking a little bit hard, listening a little bit heavy, not the same. I know that some of you, and I don't blame anyone, some of you are full of anger, very upset. And they have an open bill with the Lord Almighty. Why did it happen? But to show him the back is not the solution. He will never run bankruptcy. If I will not put that film daily in the morning, he will not lose, but we are. We lose. We will never understand him. He is not ought to give us a report. We have to give him a report. But this is not an answer. To escape from the Shabbat, from the synagogue, from the Jewish behavior. Do I have to remind you in the wagons in the train stations, when they pushed our fathers and mothers and the Zaydis into the wagons, and we stood there out at the station, how many times did you, survivors, did you hear the voices? Yankale, Moishale, Avremu, Motale, Yedenk, Adibistayit. Remember that you are Jewish. Who don't remember? I remember Surale and Leale and Hanale lit the candles of Shabbos. You think at the best Yiddish maiden? You are a Jewish girl, a Jewish daughter. This is the last will. We owe it. And we owe it for them. We owe it for ourselves. So please, brothers and sisters, come back home. Home to the old tradition, home to the old heritage, and this 
will ensure to our enemies, to the Nazis and their assistants, that they declared a war not only the Jews physically, they declared a war against Judaism as it is, as an heritage and tradition. The first attack was against the synagogues in Germany, the Kristall Night, ten months before breaking the war of September 1st, 39. On November 9, 38, over 1,400 synagogues were burned and destroyed throughout Germany. This was to emphasize that we are not only the enemies of the Jews, also the enemies of Judaism. We will not play into their hands. We will never give them the victory. We will have the victory. We will go back home and we will observe our old tradition. And we will be what our Zaydis and Bubis, the grandparents, asked us to be. This will promise our continuity, our eternity, our immortality, as we used to say, Am Israel Chaim.